Good morning, everyone. Welcome. <clears throat> So this is going to be the last uh, the last morning that we'll do uh, the section on karma. Um, so last week we were looking at how karma is is uh, increasing, so it's, it's it's constantly growing those karmic seeds, and that it's inevitable. And so um, today we'll look at the how karma is definite. All those seeds are definite to ripen. So we make sure that we're we have a comfortable position, have our our posture good, our our base, our legs are comfortable. can feel that we're sitting on our sitting bones. And then we try to have as straight a back as possible. So thinking all the way down from our seat, all the way up through the crown of our head, almost like a straight line. And our, our head is slightly tilted downwards with our chin tucked in. And then the eyes can be, you can have them closed or uh, slightly open, just to allow a little light in. Make sure we release any tension in our neck and our jaw so there's no clenching. And our arms are gently hanging to the side. And we can bring our hands together, either in the uh, mudra of concentration, so the right hand on top of the left and have the tips of our thumbs touching or we can place our hands on our, our thighs or knees and face down whatever is more comfortable so they say it's it's good to to start in a good position, in the best position possible, and then if it degenerates to the meditation, that's okay, as long as we're sharpening our meditation. And then we bring to uh, bring to mind our motivation. So. In the light of karma, may our motivation be to, to understand karma, to understand this law of cause and effect, so that we don't have to be a we don't have to just follow the karma. We don't have to just um, almost be a victim of the karma. But to really understand it, not being just a mystery. And we want to understand it so that we can clean the karma, we can stop the karma, especially the negative karma and become enlightened beings so that we can help 
others also stop their karma and become enlightened beings and stop the suffering. So that's the root of the motivation. Why else do it, right? And who else is going to do it if it's not going to be me? So I take on this responsibility. So with that, we, um, we begin to look at this, that all karma that's created, it's inevitable. There's no, uh, there's no going around it. So I think it was just yesterday when Venerable Robino was speaking to these, uh, similar topics on karma so if you have a seed and the seed's been sown in the ground and you have all these conditions you have the ground and the water the the sun the air so all these conditions create uh, uh, a complete scenario for growth so the karma uh, the the seed's going to definitely grow it's not going to not grow. It has all the conditions. But there can arise obstructive conditions. And these can um, destroy the potential for giving fruit to that seed. So you can imagine you have a an old cherry tree and um, if it's burnt in a fire, injured, it may never produce fruit again. So this uh, kind of virtuous karma is, is is destroyed. And in terms of uh, karma, so the power of virtuous karma, it can be destroyed by anger or by wrong views, uh, wrong views about the spiritual path wrong views about reality, wrong views about emptiness. So denying the fact that uh, liberation and enlightenment are possible, those are wrong views. So we have to be careful, careful with our minds with our state of mind. Because we can uh, so quickly destroy these virtuous karmic seeds. With these, um, with these states of mind and these emotions like anger. And in the Tibetan system, 
we should uh, we should be aware that the anger is particularly likely to uh, to arise or to come up when when we're suffering from lung, so uh, an imbalance of our winds. So the subtle body winds. So we need to um, spend this life in a worthwhile way, with worthwhile activities, doing virtuous activities, dedicating our merits. And when we dedicate, right, so when we dedicate those merits, we're, we're, providing, uh, we're providing them with conditions those are the conditions this dedication right that they need to bear their maximum fruit so when we dedicate these uh, virtuous activities that we do every day right um, then they can ripen as uh, fortunate rebirths uh, they can ripen as avoiding the mental states that uh, prevent their ripening so it's a um, it's a really easy thing to do you know, perform a virtuous activity know you performed a virtuous activity and then dedicate that virtuous activity to uh, ripening in the future or ripening at the time of death but on the the other side we can um, avoid all of our unvirtuous actions and then when we avoid these unvirtuous actions and we try to create the conditions that destroy their power to ripen as uh, unfortunate rebirths then we're really really protected so we're nurturing the virtuous activities and the virtuous karmic seeds and we're limiting reducing destroying the unvirtuous karmic seeds I think it's important that we we do this as often as possible, this contemplation. At least once a day before we go to sleep. Maybe even in the morning when we wake up. Maybe over lunch at midday. That way we're, we're really, we're checking our mind. Are we being virtuous? Are we being unvirtuous? Are we thinking about others? Are we thinking about ourselves? And slowly, slowly, we we do these uh, check-ins, right? We're reflecting, we're contemplating, and slowly, slowly, we we change. And just before we become a, a Buddha, we're just doing all virtuous activities all day long. Those unvirtuous have completely been stopped.
So one method uh, that we can use is to develop regret for our past uh, wrong actions. And it's, it's not just it's not just regret right? it's it's um, being strongly aware that uh, the actions were negative so having this awareness that it was a it was a negative action and it doesn't matter if uh, thinking of one's wrong actions, it makes you feel depressed or guilty. It's not so important. It's the important thing is to recognize that the actions were wrong. They were not uh, virtuous actions. They're not, they're not right. They're not good. So that's one, one simple way to just reflect and um, hold this sense of regret. And another method is to to do the Vajrasattva practice, which is a purification practice. Or, or if you don't have time, even uh, recite the Vajrasattva mantra. They say best to recite 21 times. Just saying the mantra is purifying. So, um, the Vajrasattva practice, it should... Um, eliminate the uh, negative karma created but just if you're just reciting the mantra it's, it's supposed to stop the um, the uh, increasing aspect of the karma so it doesn't eliminate the karma but it it stops the uh, the negative karmic seed from uh, growing and becoming a bigger negative So when it comes to karma, unlike a, a seed that we plant in the ground um, that can be uh, can be eaten by a bird or might dry up or might be blown away with the, the wind, um, our karmic seeds, the, the traces of the negative actions that are in these seeds, they can never be made powerless by accidental circumstances like the, the wind or the bird, right? There's nothing that's going to change that karmic seed. And we have to do it ourselves. It's the only way. There's no omnipresent power that can purify that karma. Which that's um, that's what Venerable Rabina was talking about yesterday so extensively. That there's no there's no God to forgive. There's no greater power to change the course of events and how they fruition and ripen. It's a, it's a natural law she was describing. It's not a law 
um, created by humanity. And so within this natural law, we, we, um, each mind has the um, opportunity to plant seeds, whether they be positive or negative, and then harvest those seeds, nurture those seeds, purify those seeds. It all has to be done by, by oneself. Which on on the uh, on the one hand it might seem daunting. Oh, I have to do it all myself. But on the other hand, I don't have to be responsible for someone else giving me negative karma. I don't have to worry about that. That's not going to happen. It's my mind that's responsible for my karma. It's my bodily actions that are responsible for my karma. It's my speech, the words I choose to use to spread in the world. I'm doing that. It's my karma. No one else is forcing me to have those thoughts, to do those actions, to speak those words. So that's pretty comforting. So just as I'm the creator of that seed, I can be the benefactor of the seed and I can be the destroyer of that seed. So, it's, so uh, to to summarize a bit, right? We need to try to turn our um, or turn towards virtue to um, increase the power of virtue and increase the power of the virtue that we already have. <laughs> and to turn away from the non-virtue and to purify the imprints of the non-virtue. So these are the, the, uh, the virtues already there, the non-virtues already there. So we can uh, through our dedications, we can increase our virtues. Through our purification, we can uh, decrease, diminish, destroy our non-virtues. And just as one's uh, as one um, dies alone, we ourselves, we must do these things ourselves on our own by the methods explained. So 
So maybe we just take a moment and contemplate that. But it's uh, it's my responsibility. I can do it. I created it. I can purify it. I can increase it. It's not uh, some controller out there dictating these actions and dictating their results. No, it's uh, it's all coming from my own mind. So let's just take a moment to reflect on that. So it's it's really, really beneficial to combine our study of the Dharma with the meditation on the Lama. Because it's this uh, Lama, the, the path to enlightenment that was set out by, uh, or explained by the Buddha, from his, his findings. Um, this is the, uh, the essential ingredient that gives flavor to our whole practice. So it's it's important that we integrate these contemplations into our meditation. So that our, our meditation doesn't get just one-sided and become perhaps non-virtuous or unvirtuous or maybe neutral and it's completely neutral because if um, if one just studies without applying the law room to one's mind then one will just become more and more inflated with pride we won't be able to sink that knowledge and draw it down from the uh, from the head into the heart so we try to do that step by step and bring the the dharma into our hearts so we can dedicate these merits and we can dedicate them to uh, all the minds that are awakened all the minds that are not yet awakened to the dharma may they become awakened and whatever merits that they have uh, already created may those continue to grow and whatever merits they have yet to create may they 
be created in the future. And whatever non virtuous actions those minds have created, may they be quickly destroyed and diminished. Thank you, everyone.